Hey everyone, today I wanted to show you my entire movie collection. I figured this would be something fun to do today. I haven't made a video in a while, so. Uh, I have my movies organized, uh, horror for these top two shelves, and then on top I'll, I'll show you here some of these Funko Pops and other horror things. Um, I got all the James Bond movies there, and then uh, everything else in these three shelves. And then at the very bottom, TV series and box sets, and then I got a rack of DVDs, so we'll go through all those. Uh, but we're going to start at the top here. So here's some of my horror, like Funko Pops and just collectible things. Uh, that's Sam from Trick or Treat. You got Ash Williams from Evil Dead. Patrick Bateman from American Psycho. Jack Torrance from The Shining. Uh, Hannibal Lecter from Silence of the Lambs. Michael Myers, Halloween, Freddy Krueger, Nightmare on Elm Street. Chucky from Child's Play. Candyman from the movie. Um, <clears throat> Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Sam again, Dracula, Invisible Man, Reagan from The Exorcist, uh, one of the aliens from They Live, and then Shorty from Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Uh, this mask I actually got at a haunted house, like, attraction thing. It's from the Twilight Zone series. Um, I'm forgetting the name of the episode, but it's where there's a family of, uh, I think it's four or five uh, that they're told by the older, I guess it's the grandpa. He's got a fortune and he's on his, di or his deathbed. And if they wear these masks for the last few hours of his life, then they'll get the fortune. If they take it off at all, then they lose it. And since they only care about his fortune, they decide to wear it. And if you've never seen the episode, it's really good. I don't want to give it away, but uh, yeah, I think that's a pretty good one. And then you got... Uh, I got this at Cinemark. It's like a Billy the Puppet little stuffed animal thing. Uh, my favorite horror, like, slasher character, I guess I should say, The Miner from My Bloody Valentine, Ghost Face, Glow in the Dark thing. Uh, I'll pull this one off. I'd pull the rest of these, but every time I've ever tried to move them, the whole thing just starts to fall over. Uh, so this is from Disney, The Tower of Terror. I was a big fan of the, the movie when I was a kid. I still have it over here. And then that's the back. I think it's kind of cool. <clears throat> and then I got this ghost face also from Cinemark. So uh, now on to the, the movies. Um, I'll talk about, you know, many as I can, but we'll see here. Some of them I'll, I'll talk about more in detail than others. 1408, uh, I really like this one. I think kind of, I wouldn't say it's overlooked because I know a lot of people know about it, but I don't think it's talked about as much anymore and i still think it's really good it's more psychological than like true like scary horror and that's what i like about it uh if you've never seen it it's john cusack and samuel l jackson and john cusack is a, a writer and after his daughter died he's trying to find any evidence of there being life after death but he's a very heavy skeptic and he gets an invitation to the dolphin hotel and i think it's new york city and uh, the room is actually haunted and it's really evil and it's a good movie. If you've never seen it, I don't want to tell you too much. So 30 days of night, probably my favorite vampire movie cure for wellness. This one's really weird. Sometimes I like it. Sometimes I don't, I think it's a little long and kind of tries to do too much at times, but I've, I've enjoyed it at times and other times I'm kind of like, eh, alien. American Psycho, Annihilation, Antlers. So this movie came out in 2021, and there's a few movies that came out from that year that I'll, I'll show you here. Uh, I know a lot of people talk about the last few years as their, like, favorite year for horror, but nobody really talks about 2021. That was my favorite year for horror. There's, like, five movies at least that came out that are really good uh this would probably be my i think i had it like third or fourth favorite of that year uh, as above so below really good found footage horror autopsy of jane doe babadook banana splits movie i only saw that one once but it was pretty fun belko experiment the original black christmas one of my favorites Black Coat's Daughter. I really should watch this one again. I really like it. I've seen it about 
two or three times, but it's been a few years. Uh, I know the director, uh, Osgood Perkins, is coming out with another movie this year, and I'm looking forward to that also. I think it's uh, called Long Legs or something like that, but it's like a serial killer or Black Swan. The Boy. The original Candyman. The 2021 remake. I really like that one also. Uh, that was, I think, like my fifth favorite of that year. Uh, I, I can't even remember how many. I'll, I'll show you all of them because I have all the ones that are my favorite. There's another one coming up here in a second. Casper. And then this was my favorite from the year it came out. Sensor. I didn't see it until like a year later. And so my favorite is still yet to come. Like whenever that year ended, I was like, oh, this is my favorite movie. Um, and then I saw this like a few months later and I was like, man, I, I, that's really tough, but I think I like sensor more. I also really love the colors of the artwork of this. It comes with a lot of like stuff inside, but, uh, I don't want to pull it out cause I only got one hand here. So but if you've never seen sensor and you're into psychological horror, I highly recommend this one. It's one of my favorites. <clears throat> Child's play, Child's play two, Christine. Conjuring and Conjuring 2. I'm kind of tired of those movies. Um, I I don't think I ever really care to watch them again. I just think that they're very, like, I don't know, just run-of-the-mill horror that I've just seen so much. They're definitely better than the rest of the series, but I don't know. I've kind of gotten tired of them. Uh, Constantine. I haven't yet watched this since I got it, but it is a really good and one of my favorite Keanu Reeves movies, at least in my top probably five to ten uh point break is probably my favorite of his creature from the black lagoon creep show creep show two i'm not the biggest fan of those movies but uh they were cheap enough so i figured i'd get them the cursed was a really underrated horror from i think this was 2022 it's a werewolf movie and it's very it takes the ideas of a werewolf but it changes the complete like look of them and it's really dark it's probably the darkest werewolf movie i've seen i really like it there's like an autopsy scene in this movie that is really good they use this like practical effects and if you've never seen that i i definitely recommend that one i think it's on hulu still the dark and the wicked the descent event horizon now we got the whole evil dead series evil dead one to Army of Darkness, the, the remake, and then Evil Dead Rise. I don't know how I would rank them, honestly. It just depends on the mood I'm in. But I do have to say Evil Dead Rise is, is definitely my least favorite. I still like it, but I don't love it. The Exorcist. The Fog. The Forest. Ghost Ship. And then this movie, I, I really think need people need to give a chance uh it doesn't seem like anybody really talks about it it's called ghost stories obviously but there's a lot of movies called ghost stories so this one is like a 2017 i believe british horror movie so you need to like look up specifically like this one it's got andy nyman paul whitehouse uh, alex lauder and martin freeman and this is in my top three favorite horror movies i would say American Psycho 1, Session 9-2, and Ghost Stories 3. This movie is very interesting. It's about a skeptic of anything paranormal or religious. And he kind of dedicates his whole life to it because he of his childhood, and he grew up watching uh, some guy who kind of did the same thing. Well, he became just like his idol or whatever you want to call him. And so... Years later, he gets, after the guy's disappearance, he gets a, like a tape in the mail and says, you know, can you meet me at my house or wherever I live? And I want to talk to you about these three cases that I could never solve. And it just, it's kind of anthology horror because they're three separate cases, but it's all wrapped into one overarching story. It's really good. It was actually like a screen or like a, like a stage play at one point um but yeah if you've never heard of this i really like i like watching people 
react to, to movies, uh, at least genuine reactions. There's some people you can tell are like way over the top, but this is one that I've never seen. And I would love to see somebody that I like to watch do a reaction to that. And I don't think I've ever seen anybody even talk about it. Grave Encounters, another one of my favorites. Green Room. Haunt. Halloween. I'm glad I got these. They cost a lot, but uh, these are like the remaster 4Ks because the, the original Halloween 4K I had looked pretty terrible, honestly. Uh, Halloween 2. Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. And Halloween H2O. Those are the only four in the series I like. I like this the series, but I don't love it like a lot of people. Michael Myers is probably my favorite like main horror icon, but um, he's not. It's not like my favorite horror series ever by any means. Uh, Haunted Mansion, Hellraiser. I think the first one's really good, and the second one's a little weird, but I do like it. Uh, first one I definitely prefer. I I watched these two and then the remake that came out last year, I believe. And I didn't love that one, but this is this isn't one of my favorite series, but I do like the look of Pinhead. So um I do have like a t shirt of that also. Hide and seek. I've got a ton of horror t shirts that <laughs> I got them whenever I was like younger and they just don't fit me anymore. House on Haunted Hill House of Wax, I Know What You Did Last Summer, and I Still Know What You Did Last Summer, The Invisible Man. So I actually at one point had all the, the 4Ks of this, the original series, uh, or the original Universal Movie Monsters. I sold them thinking I was going to get a lot of money for them, and then I didn't, and I was like, well, okay. It's like, that sucks, but uh, I only really wanted those two, Invisible Man and Creature from the Black Lagoon, so... I got enough to, like, buy those two, but I was expecting to get way more. Uh, I Trapped the Devil, another really underrated one. I don't see very many people talk about. Uh, it even says here on the top that it's basically a Twilight Zone episode that got changed. Uh, so if you've never seen, or if you've ever seen The Howling Man, and you've never seen this movie, uh, that episode of The Twilight Zone is basically adapted into a full movie. And it's really good. It's definitely darker. Um, but I do actually like the episode more than this movie. But I still really like the movie. And not enough people seem to know about it. Jacob's Ladder. Jeepers Creepers. Killer Clowns from Outer Space. I think they're making a 4K of this. And I'll definitely get it. This is one of those like really fun horror movies for me. That uh i've seen a few times and i only watched it for the first time like a year or two ago and i've kind of become like obsessed with it ever since it's it's really fun last shift the lodge the mist my bloody valentine nefarious this one's okay it came out last year i liked it the first time second time it was okay i really don't know if I'll ever watch it again, but, uh, and then the night house came out in 2021. This was originally my favorite movie of that year. And after I saw censor, it was kind of a tie, but I would say censor, I think just does the story a little bit better than this, but I still really like this when it came out. I was like, so excited for this. When I saw it in theaters, I didn't really know what to think at first. I went and saw it again at like a drive-in and I really enjoyed it. Um, it's disappointing for me because a lot of my favorite horror movies that are just not coming out on 4K. This year, uh, Lisa Frankenstein, I don't think, is coming out on 4K, and I love that movie. And uh, there was another one that, um, Thanksgiving, that just didn't, it's not coming out on 4K, and it's disappointing because I really enjoyed those movies. Oculus, Opera, Pearl. I really like Pearl. I don't like X. Uh, I don't know why. I just like the style of this one. And I don't know. I just didn't really enjoy the, the Texas Chainsaw kind of style of X. Pet Cemetery remake. Prince of Darkness. Let's kind of get
get harder as I get down the shelf because I'm six foot and the shelf is smaller than me even at the top. Like that's like to my chin or my mouth. And by the time I get to that bottom, I'm going to be like laying on the floor. Uh, Psycho. Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City. The Ring. I know they're coming out with 4K of that, but you have to get the entire pack. I'm just not interested in any of those other ones. Salem's a lot. That's another thing. I've I've had a lot of these movies in the past. Like American Psycho, I've had DVD, Blu-ray, and now 4K. Like some of my favorites I've upgraded, and other ones it's like I'm either waiting or I'm just not going to do it because it's like, well, like how good is the quality really going to upscale or, you know, anything like that. So um, Scream, my favorite in the series. Scream 2, my third favorite in the series. Scream 3... Uh, would be my fourth favorite. Scream 4 would be my second favorite. Scream 5, probably fifth. And then I just don't really like Scream 6 very much. I don't know what it is about that one. There's things I like, but I think, honestly, the reveal... I predicted the reveal in this movie so early. Like, I knew really like within 40 minutes of that movie i knew everyone who was the killer i was just like man that's too easy i've never been able to do that and i got it like within a third of the movie like that that was disappointing for me uh session nine i mentioned it's my second favorite horror movie if you've never seen it i obviously am recommending it it's pretty good and it's filmed as if it's like a tv movie which is weird uh, when I first saw that, I was like, ooh, this might not be good. And then, like, by the end of the movie, I was like, I really liked that. It's one of those psychological horror movies that... Um, it's one of the few movies I've actually sat through this every single special feature. I've only done that with, like, two movies, and that's one of them. The Shining. I really love that cover on 4K. That might be my favorite, like, cover of all of mine on 4K. Uh... If I see another one, maybe I'll I'll mention it, but I hadn't thought of it till now. Signs. Silence of the Lambs. Silent Hill. Silent Night, Deadly Night. The Sixth Sense. Spiral. I did see the rest of the newest Saw movie. I wasn't a big fan of it. I'm honestly not the biggest fan of that series. I don't think I'm gonna buy the newest one even though i have all the other ones suspiria the taking of deborah logan texas chainsaw massacre thanksgiving they live the thing i'm waiting for this to just fall over since there's only a few left 13 ghosts taurus trap this one uh, is a really fun, like, 70s movie. It's kind of silly, and that's what I like about it. Um, if you're in for, like, just the really relaxed... I, I don't want to necessarily call it a slasher, but it's that style of movie. It's so, like, crazy. It's like a guy who uses telekinetic powers to control, like, mannequins. And it's really weird, but it's fun. Trick or Treat. I'm not a big fan of this one honestly i more got it because i wanted to give this one another shot when i originally saw it i was just like that's okay and the second time i kind of felt the same i was like i don't love this as much as most people um i think it's more the atmosphere of this movie that is what people like and sam i don't really enjoy most of those stories i enjoy the one with the dad and the son but that's kind of it uh underwater Urban Legend, Valentine, Vampires, uh, VHS 1, 2, Viral, 94, and 99. I am never going to buy 85. I did not enjoy that one. There was not a single segment in that one. I bought Viral, and Viral is considered to be the worst one. And I only bought it because I like that middle segment. And if I'll buy Viral and I won't buy 85, that'll tell you how much I don't like it. Um, the Void. That's a really good, like, practical effects horror movie. If you haven't seen that, I knew it was going to fall over. 
Um, if you've never seen The Void, definitely give that a shot. It's basically like The Thing in a way, but in a hospital. And it goes into some crazy, like, it's like if you mix the idea of The Thing with a, um, what's that author? Oh, man. Everyone, like, uses his name as, like, an adjective to describe horror. Um, it's like cosmic horror. I, I, you'll know his name just by me saying that, but um, I'm terrible at remembering names, so. Uh, and this not really horror, but I'm, I'd say it's kind of horror comedy. What We Do in the Shadows, and then Your Next, another one of my favorites. All right, so now we're on to my favorite movie series. I just, these are like, I wanted to get all of them individually because I really like owning individual movies more than like just packs of movies. So I got, I had some of these already and I rebought them to get the cover I even wanted because that's how weird I am. Um, I didn't rebuy two of them. The two 4Ks that I own, I prefer uh, of Casino Royale and Skyfall. I prefer the, the Blu-ray covers, but I was like, I don't really want to downgrade to blu-ray so i was like i'll just you know with these other ones uh get the cover i wanted so i'm gonna shift these over and start uh i know they're all gonna fall but whatever so dr no um i'm gonna do a, another ranking of these i know i just did one like six or seven months ago but i'm doing another rewatch with my friend who hasn't seen very many of these and we just finished live and let die uh, a night or two ago so we're, as soon as we're done going through all these, I'm going to do another ranking because it, it has already changed. So, uh, Dr. No from Russia with Love. That's my favorite of the Connery era. Goldfinger. Thunderball. I, another one I really like that some people don't. Uh, my friend, I'll tell you his Connery ranking so far. His favorite is uh, You Only Live Twice. Um, then from Russia with Love. Then Doctor No, then Diamonds Are Forever, Goldfinger, and then Thunderball. He did not like Thunderball. Uh, On Her Majesty's Secret Service. Um, that is my least favorite. That hasn't changed, but I didn't hate it or anything. Like I don't hate any of these movies. There are things in them I don't like. Um, I whenever I get to it, I'll tell you which one does actually have something in it that I truly kind of hate it for, but I don't hate overall because it's still James Bond uh, Diamonds Are Forever Live and Let Die The Man with the Golden Gun The Spy Who Loved Me Moonraker I really like that cover I like the ones that have like more to it than just him standing there or him with a girl or something uh, I like that has like you know the, the space behind him in the moon and him in the suit the, the space suit uh, with Drax's, like, space station. Uh, for Your Eyes Only. Octopussy. Never Say Never Again. So this one, I did actually get... It's Blu-ray and DVD, but I got it in a DVD case, and I had to cut it to fit this Blu-ray, and that was such a pain, because I'm, like, that particular about it, like, <laughs> fitting my collection exactly. Uh, a View to a Kill. The Living Daylights, I really like that cover also. That's probably my second favorite of all of them. License to Kill. Goldeneye. Tomorrow Never Dies. That one's really lame to me. It's like, what is even going on in that? It's just like they just... Honestly, it doesn't even fully... It looks like an AI rendering of him. I know it's probably not, but... I don't even know what's going on in the background at that moment. It's probably when he's on the submarine, but it, it looks like there's like a highway or something behind him. I don't know. The World is Not Enough. That one's my favorite. I know some people hate that movie. Some people like it, but that is my favorite in the entire series. It was the first one I ever saw. One of the first games in the series I ever played. And I think that one will probably always be my favorite because it's got my favorite Bond, Pierce Brosnan. So I grew up in the 90s and early 2000s. So Pretty much, I, I really feel like you growing up watching these movies plays a huge part in who's your favorite Bond. My friend grew up with uh, Daniel Craig, and he had never seen any of them other than the Daniel Craig movies. So his favorite is Daniel Craig, and mine is Pierce Brosnan. Die Another Day. 
Casino Royale. Um, I prefer the one that has the, the cover with the Aston Martin, uh, the Blu-ray cover, but like I said, I'm not going to downgrade. Uh, Quantum of Solace. This is my favorite color, or cover, because it has my favorite color. Uh, that like gray or that like silverish gray that's the color of my car and i really love that color and while the movie's not i'd say it's kind of in the middle for me i don't dislike it i do think it could definitely have been better but um i i for what it is it's fine and it doesn't do anything to straight up upset me like a movie coming up here so uh yeah it's not my least favorite of his skyfall again i think the the blu-ray cover where he's like Laying down shooting with the white background looks a little bit better. Spectre annoys me, but it doesn't straight up upset me. Um, Spectre is stupid because of the whole Step Brothers thing. They took an idea from Austin Powers and turned it into actual Bond lore, which really just is dumb to me. But honestly, this movie has fallen so much, no time to die. I hate the ending of this. If they use the ending where he had survived and he's out on the raft... I would have honestly been better with that, and I still, I just don't enjoy most of this movie. I liked the kind of idea of it, but then when you, like, it would have been in the middle for me, and then the way they end it with him dying just really bothers me. Like, I don't like the idea of James Bond dying. I don't like what Daniel Craig's Bond kind of is. I understand every ad ad every adaptation of Bond is, you know, different, which is fine, but I kind of like the just the idea of a standalone adventure of Bond where he's not going to die or anything. It's just, you know, a fun action movie. And that's kind of, for me, why Daniel Craig's era has declined a little bit with some of his, especially his last two. Um, he seems to be having, like, less and less fun as they go on. Like, Casino Royale is a really fun movie. Quantum, I just think, is kind of poorly written, and they did what they could with that. Skyfall feels like they they did have some fun with that. Spectre and No Time to Die, it was less like they wanted to be as serious as possible with a few jokes here and there, but I just, it didn't work for me. And whenever I get to my rankings of these movies in a few weeks, um, you'll see kind of how low it has fallen. My last ranking, that was like 16 or 17, and that was only six months ago, so... Uh, now back into the, the regular movies. Now I'm sitting on the floor. <laughs> uh, I'm going to try and get through these a little bit faster. 13 Hours. 310 to Yuma. 40-Year-Old Virgin. 47 Ronin. That one I think is actually pretty fun. People don't really seem to like it. But it honestly feels to me like the game Sekiro, which is one of my favorite games, um, but made into a movie. Obviously the story is different, but it just kind of has that feel to it. 500 Days of Summer, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, A Bug's Life, Ad Astra, A Million Ways to Die in the West, Air Force One, Airplane, Allied, Ambulance, let me reposition myself here, I can get I think in a more comfortable spot. I'm sitting on a bunch of cords. I moved like all of my furniture. It's like on the other side of the room, just like sitting there, because this is honestly usually where my bed is. Um, American History X. I think I showed Ambulance, but yeah, I have that just in case I forgot that quick. Uh, Anchorman. This is like the TV miniseries of And Then There Were None. I just consider it to be like a long movie, but it technically is a BBC like miniseries um i'm a big fan of the book i don't really read but of the few books i've actually read in my life this would be my favorite um this actor right here in the middle i wouldn't mind seeing as james bond actually um he doesn't have quite the the i wouldn't say that he kind of looks like um a mix of like young pierce brosnan and, and timothy dalton so for me i really wouldn't mind seeing actually it's funny, these three right here in the middle, I wouldn't mind seeing in a Bond movie. Um, you know, if you want to go with the guy on the left, I don't know his name, as the villain or M, that would work. And then also Sam Neill, who at one point was up for the role of James Bond. Um, 
either the villain or M. I think either would work. So, uh, but yeah, if you've never seen that, I think that's the best adaptation. Towards the end, it gets a little bit weird, but I still like it, and it's my favorite to date. The Austin Power series, Baby Driver, Bad Words, Batman. Batman Returns, Forever, Batman and Robin, Batman Begins, The Dark Knight and The Dark Knight Rises, and then finally The Batman. If you are a fan of those movies, now I don't love them, but I grew up with them, so I'm a little bit more accepting of them. Those first four, uh, Batman through Batman and Robin, they look fantastic on 4K uh, I would highly recommend it if you're even, like, just a casual fan. And if you just like Batman and you're, like, in, like into visual movies as as I am, they really look really good, all of them. Billy Madison. Birds of Prey. I honestly liked this a lot when it came out. And I rewatched it recently and I didn't like it almost at all. I don't know if it just, like, didn't age well for me. Or it was just like the mood I was in. But I just didn't enjoy it. Uh, Black Hawk Down. Blade Runner. I really need to like watch this. I saw this once so long ago. I don't even know which version of it I saw. Because I know there's multiple. But uh, the same friend of mine. Who were watching the James Bond series. His was like. I don't know if it's his favorite movie. But it's one of his favorites. Is Blade Runner 2049. And he wants to watch that with me. And... Um, I told him, I was like, let me finish the first one. And I just like, because we're watching James Bond, I've been like too focused in on that series. And that's like the only thing I want to watch right now. So I do have to get to that at some point. Uh, Blade Runner 2049. Uh, so this, I actually switched the cover of the 4k I bought was so damaged that I switched the uh, the cover, it is the 4K, but this is the Blu-ray cover. It's almost the same, but, um, yeah, it is the 4K. I just, the cover had, like, a hole right through, like, the center of Freddie Mercury there. And I was like, okay, I don't like that. Um, Book of Eli. The Boondock Saints. Burn After Reading. Really funny movie. The Campaign. Cliffhanger. Clue, Dan in real life. Let me get a little bit more comfortable here. Uh, the two Deadpool movies. I'm actually really not looking forward to three. I I don't like that it's more comic book than comedy. I've never been a fan of like comic book movies besides Batman. So I only saw this because Ryan Reynolds and his kind of humor. And it just looks like the third one's not going to be as funny. So, like, I'm not quite as interested. I probably will still see it, but I'm not, like, excited. I know some people are like, that's the movie for them this year. Um, Deadpool 2. The Departed. Die Hard. Dodgeball. Doubt. Dragged Across Concrete. Dune. I'm definitely going to get Dune 2. I don't know which one I like more. They're honestly kind of like tied for me. The action in Dune 2 is really good, but Dune 1 blew me away so much when I first saw it, and I just expected more of the same with Dune 2, so I wasn't like surprised that it was as good as it was. So, yeah, I mean, that's kind of, I, I, they're kind of tied for me, but the ending of Dune 2 is so good, with that fight scene that I don't know, it, it's kind of a tie. I really like Duncan Idaho in the first one. Any scene with him is, like, my favorite part of that movie. Dunkirk. Employee of the Month. Enemy. This is a weird one also by the director of Dune, Denis Villeneuve. Uh, this is, like, the Canadian version. I couldn't get at the time when this, like, whenever I got this, which was, like, 2014... It was sold out on all copies of the U.S. version. And this disc is so weird. You don't... Like, there's no menu. There's no, like, play, scene selection. It just goes to, like, the trailer of a movie. 
and then like it you just have to hit a button to, to play it but i i never knew which button because i was like it's like the up on the arrow or something on the little remote and i'm like what the heck I, the first time i got it i'm like hitting these buttons i'm like why isn't this playing but yeah weird like disc uh, exodus gods and kings fargo fight club first blood Ford versus Ferrari, Forgetting Sarah Marshall. This is one of my favorite comedies. Uh, it's hilarious. Ah, uh, man, now I got it. There we go. Friends with Benefits, Fury, Game Night. A lot of people don't like this, and I find it to be hilarious. Like, I've seen it, I don't know, like five times, and I never, like, have a bad time with it. I've shown it to like three or four people and only one of them liked it. And I was like, I don't understand what you guys don't like about this. I'm like, it's hilarious. But yeah, I, I definitely recommend it. Ghost. Gladiator. Gone in 60 Seconds. The Great Gatsby. The Green Mile. The Gray. Hacksaw Ridge. Happy Gilmore, Heat, The Heat, Horrible Bosses 1, Horrible Bosses 2, and Hostiles, or Hostiles. Alright, next shelf. I can't tell you how uncomfortable I am down here. Uh, yeah, my arm and leg were starting to fall asleep because I'm like leaning up against something to get to that corner. How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, and it's kind of a, a girl movie, but I actually kind of enjoy it. Uh, I watched this the first time whenever I was like a kid, so that also played a part in it, and before I like really knew what like girl, you know, like rom-com type of movies were, but I mean, I, I still think guys can watch it. Matthew McConaughey, you know, at the time was kind of known for these type of movies, and that was the first thing I ever saw him in, but since then, you know, he's been in a lot of movies. Um... And speaking of him, I know I have the original. It's coming up on the next shelf. I don't know if it's true or not that they're supposed to be coming out with a Tombstone remake with him as Doc Holliday. That's an interesting choice. I do think he'll be good in that. I don't love Jeffrey Dean Morgan playing as uh, the the uh, I forget his name, the other guy, the sheriff. I think he would have been better as uh, the the villain. Who I'm not good at these old west names. I'm not. You know, I can't remember them, but I think he would have been better as the villain. But um, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, I Love You Man, Identity, In Bruges, <laughs> that movie's hilarious, uh, The Indiana Jones movies, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Temple of Doom, Last Crusade, and then finally Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I like all four of those. And I don't like the new one. I just... That new one is... Just feels so not Indiana Jones to me. I was... I had no expectations. And I was still disappointed. It just feels like... They spent 90% of that movie... In a green screen. Like, just in front of one. And it was just kind of disappointing to me. I realize, you know, he can't do... What he used to be able to. But... I, at this point, like, why even make it? <laughs> Um, Joker, Kill Bill 1 and 2, Peter Jackson's King Kong, The Last Samurai, this is a double pack of two Adam Sandler movies, Mr. Dietz and Big Daddy. I didn't know how to even honestly alphabetize this, I was going to do Sandler. And I was going to do Mr. Deeds, and I was, gonna, I was like, nah, I'll just do Laugh Out Loud double feature. So I put in the L's, and I was like, whatever. Um, MacGruber, <laughs> that movie's hilarious. The Machinist. The Man from Uncle, really underrated spy thriller with uh, Henry Cavill, Army Hammer, Alicia Vikander, Elizabeth Debicki, and I think you Grant. Uh, yeah, this is that last name. Um, that is probably my favorite spy movie that is not James Bond. 
and I really would like to see Henry Cavill as Blonde. I don't know if he's too old at this point, but I would love to see him, even if it's for just like a movie or two, just because I really just like him as an actor. I'm looking forward to that movie that he's coming out with in like a month, that uh, World War II spy movie. Man of Steel, The Mechanic. I bought this because I remember as a kid when I first saw this, I was like, oh, I'm re I really liked it. And so I was like, I'll get it again. It was like $3 or something. I, you know, took it home and I watched it. I got like halfway through it and I was like, this is not aged well for me. I was like, I'm not even going to finish this. I'm just going to keep it because if for if I paid $3, I'm not getting anything for it to, to sell it. But maybe I'll watch it again one day and be like, okay, I'm in you know more of a mood for this. But Memento, Midway. Now we have the entire Mission Impossible series. One, two, three, Ghost Protocol, Rogue Nation, Fallout, which this one's my favorite, and Dead Reckoning. Um, I just had to get them all on 4K. I just recently did that, which cost a lot, but I had them all, but then I didn't have them all on 4K, and I was like, okay, well, I'm going to... I had that Reckoning in 4K, uh, Rogue Nation Fallout, I think. I don't even remember. But, yeah, I didn't have the other ones, so I was like, okay, I'm just going to buy them all on 4K. Monsters, Inc., My Best Friend's Girl, The Nice Guys, Nonstop, Nope. I don't know whether you consider this horror or not. It's kind of more sci-fi with light horror, so I... I originally had it with the horror, but I was like, eh, it's not really horror to me, so I'm just going to put it under just the regular movies. Ocean's Eleven, One Hour Photo, I really enjoy this one. Uh, I think a lot of people have come to know this one now, but it's a Robin Williams, like, psychological horror thriller. He plays kind of like a, basically like a Walmart photo developer who becomes obsessed with this family and it's pretty good. I don't want to tell you too much, but if you've never seen it, give it a watch. The Other Guys, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Paths of Glory, The Patriot, Point Break, I love that movie, Predator, The Prestige, Primal Fear, The Proposal, the Punisher. Okay, let's move over a little bit here. Rambo. Reservoir Dogs. The Revenant. Road to Perdition. The Rock. This looks really good on 4K. The Running Man. I just got it um, a few months ago, and I watched it. This is one of the best-looking 4Ks I have. Just all the colors and of the 80s and that style really works on 4k really any 80s movie that i've seen just seems to just really look nice rush saving mr banks my favorite movie saving private ryan schindler's list school of rock See No Evil, Hear No Evil. This is kind of one of those comedies that I don't hear very many people talk about, but I saw it one day with my mom. It was like on demand whenever you would watch free movies on there a long time ago, and I thought it was funny, and uh, everyone that I've showed it to has enjoyed it, so it's it's pretty good. Semi-Pro 7. I think they were supposed to come out with a 4K for that, but I don't know if they ever did. Seven Psychopaths. Shutter Island. Sicario, Sicario Day of the Soldado, Sound of Music, Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3, Spy, Star Wars Rogue One, Star Wars Force Awakens, Last Jedi, and Rise of Skywalker. I more own them because I wanted to have them all for the rare chance that I, I... I don't know. I guess a year or two ago I went and watched all of them. 
I didn't hate them, but I, I'm not a, like a Star Wars fan. If some of the things that they did in that movie, they did in James Bond, like, I, I would have been, yeah, I can understand why people hate them. For me, it's just like, whatever, I don't care. The, the original three are never going to be beaten, and I grew up with the prequels, so I enjoy them. But, yeah, it's, that Rogue One I like too, also, but Step Brothers, Talladega Nights. Tenet, I love that movie. It's it's kind of like if James Bond was sci-fi and directed by Christopher Nolan. I would love to see Christopher Nolan make a Bond movie. And I honestly think, you know, Henry Cavill would probably be my first choice for Bond. My second would be that actor that I showed in that, and then there were none. And then any of these three would work for me. And then third, I think Robert Pattinson honestly gets kind of too much hate guy is a very good actor and in this movie he feels a lot like kind of like James Bond in certain ways I would love to see him play James Bond give it a, a shot so uh, yeah I I love that movie and I've been you know kind of want, wanting to rewatch it anyway so I might soon that thing you do throw mama from the train tombstone total recall the Town, Toy Story, Toy Story 2, Trainwreck. I watched that once. I don't even... I mean, I, I thought it was funny, but Amy Schumer is the opposite of funny to me. So, like, I really don't even know what... I think I got it for, like, a dollar somewhere, and I was like, I'll give it a shot. Didn't expect to like it, and was like, okay, it's got some funny moments. I don't know if I'll ever watch it again. It's been, like, four years, so I don't even know if, if I ever will one day. Triple Nine. This is one of my favorite movies. Tron Legacy. I don't think it could look any better from Blu-ray the way it does now. But if there's a 4K ever made of this and it could look better, I would definitely buy it. Because that movie in Blu-ray is like equivalent to what some 4Ks look like. Tropic Thunder. The Untouchables. Valkyrie. I know these are going to fall... Walk the Line, We Were Soldiers. That's one of my favorite war movies also. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. The Wrestler. Zoolander. And Zookeeper. So those are all my Blu-rays and 4Ks that are like just regular non-box sets. There's some more down here. I am about as uncomfortable as you could be here sitting on this floor. So I'll do my best to talk about some of these but i'm gonna probably hurry up through some of them third rock from the sun really good tv series from when i was growing up uh american werewolf in london aero video pack looks really nice has a lot of stuff in it the uh series of nightmare on elm street back to the future trilogy uh this is band of brothers this is the blu-ray for some reason it's backwards i don't know why um chernobyl 4k deep red the Dario Argento uh, Aero video. That's my second favorite of his. Uh, Suspiria is my favorite of his, you know, like horror movies. So next is, I got this off of Etsy. Somebody made the complete Goosebumps series and I couldn't find it anywhere. Uh, but this guy was selling it for a really good price. It was like $25 for the entire series. And I don't think it's a great series, but I grew up with these. And there's some episodes that are still pretty decent, and some just do not hold up, or were probably never good even when they came out. But I think that it's fun. Uh, it's just that that's the only artwork is that on the front for both of them. I'm not gonna pull these all out, but it's the series I know. Or uh, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. It's my favorite TV series. Um. I don't have all of them because I think they stopped making them, or if they haven't, I just. I haven't looked into them, but there are certain episodes you can't watch on Hulu, so that's why I own them all. The Karate Kid 4 movie pack, 1 through 3, and then the next Karate Kid. The Monsters. This is like a bootleg copy that I got. I didn't even expect them ever to come out with this. So, like, a year ago, I didn't. I still don't have Disney+. Plus. I don't think I ever will. Um, I was like, I really want to watch this, and somebody was selling this for, like, I don't know, $15, and I was like, I'll just buy it. Well, when I got it, and it was in, like, 
this Mandarin or whatever. I was like, oh, shit. It's like, is this even in English? <laughs> but it is. Uh, the Others 4K. I haven't watched that yet since I got it on 4K. Parks and Rec series. The, like, you, this is the only way you could get these movies on Blu-ray is this, like, four-pack. I only ever watched the first one. Don't see myself ever watching two through four. The first one is perfect, ends perfectly. I don't really want to see any more because I feel like it'll just kind of, like, mess it up for me. Uh, this is the complete series of Reno 91 before they restarted it. I haven't seen any of the new episodes, but I would like to. I just don't have really any, like, I don't like to, to do streaming services. I have, uh, I share Netflix and Hulu with people, but myself, I don't like, I did Shudder for a year and I was so disappointed. I was like, there's nothing on here that I either don't own or don't like, I just don't want to watch. So yeah, I, of course now there is, I want to see that late night with the devil, but it's not coming anywhere around here. So I don't know. I might travel somewhere to, to go see it. Uh, Rocky collection, saw collection, the Spongebob, I grew up with that show, the first four seasons, the two Star Wars prequel and sequel, um, the whole Twilight Zone trilogy, and then, or series, the original, and then this is the new 4K of the Warriors. This looks really good. If I could open this up without, like, struggling to put this back together, this comes with so much stuff. It's an Arrow video box, so if you know anything about them, they really do a good job of, like, putting a lot of extra stuff in there that movie looks really good in 4k i watched it like the next day after i got it and it looks really nice so now we're going to end here on the dvds um this is my favorite adaptation of the all quiet on the western front book uh i didn't know until just yesterday actually that they make a blu-ray of this i don't know if i'll ever get it because honestly the dvd is good enough but this is from i think 1979 um I'm sure it says it somewhere, and I'm just not seeing it. Anyway, I could have swore that I looked it up once, but I really like that. It's got Richard Thomas and Ernest Bourdain, I think. So I think that's how you say his name. I don't know, but I, I recognize him from something. I don't remember what, but I I know who he who he is or was. Uh, Night at the Roxbury. This is the Batman's uh, Mask of the Phantasm. I grew up with these two that one and then batman and mr freeze i don't feel a need to i know they come out on blu-ray and 4k i'm i don't feel a need like i i haven't watched them in so long i watched them so much as a kid that it's kind of like eh, maybe i'll watch them one day again but uh bug this is okay sometimes i watch it and like it sometimes i don't um it's really like a crazy psychological horror at the end it just goes like off the wall um, but Ashley Judd and Michael Shannon are really good in it. So, you know, it's made by the director of The Exorcist. It's, it's all right. I wouldn't say it's, you know, if you're like really into horror movies, maybe give it a shot, but I, I wouldn't like highly recommend it. This movie is one of my favorites of favorite comedies. The Cable Guy. Uh, I just, I've always enjoyed this movie. I didn't know until recently this was really hated. I don't know why. I think it's hilarious. Just some of the jokes in here just really get me. Um, and then Ben Stiller, I believe, directed this. And the parts with him where he's on TV and he's talking about how his brother's killer was Asian when he really killed his brother. It's just hilarious. It's I, I just that's one moment. And then where they're like about to go duel at that medieval times and he puts like the, the skin on his face. He's like doing the silence of the lambs thing uh, that's funny the canal uh this is like a british or irish scottish whatever i don't even know uh horror movie that it's kind of psychological it's like a ghost type of movie the last like 15 minutes of this movie are great everything else is kind of boring honestly i like it but i don't love it uh death watch this one's decent it's Basically, a, a World War One horror where these soldiers are stuck in a trench, basically by supernatural forces, and I don't want to tell you too much, but it's pretty good. Um, this is basically a James Bond movie, and I think it's great. So, Pierce Brosnan basically plays James Bond, 
and Patrick Stewart basically plays M. Um, your villains in this movie are the actor, what is his name? I'm drawing up Ted Levine. Um, basically plays like the henchman, and he is driving a train with a nuclear bomb on it through Europe, and if you know who Ted Levine is, he's Buffalo Bill from Silence of the Lambs. And then, as the main villain, you have Christopher Lee, who was already a Bond villain, um, but he plays a Russian general, and I just think this is, like, such a underrated movie. I wanted to see it for years and years, and every time I was like, ah, oh, I'll, I'll watch it one day, and, like, last year I watched it, and I was like, that is a basically a James Bond movie. I was like, that is great. Now, he doesn't play a British spy, he plays an American, but... I mean, he still kind of has his accent, just enough that you can tell. Um, but still, it's really good. I think this was before... This was sometime in between, I think, Golden Eye and World Is Not Enough. Somewhere in that era. Because it looks like it's probably before Tomorrow Never Dies, if I had to guess. But after Golden Eye. The five Final Destination film collection... Hollow Man, the Jackass 1, 2, 3, and 4, uh, Metallica, some kind of monster documentary. Metallica is my favorite band. I actually really like St. Anger. I know people hate it, but it's actually one of my favorites of theirs. I just like the sound. Now, I don't know if I'd want that for every album, but I like it for that one album. They tried something different. Mothman Prophecies, this was one of many movies that I own that's filmed by me. Um, this is filmed in Pittsburgh and towns north of Pittsburgh, and I really... It's cool to see that. I don't love the movie, but I, I think it's nice to see, like, you know, places you, you see often enough and have been to, you know, in a movie and, like, some cool things happening. But the Naked Gun trilogy, uh, I know that they're doing a new... Naked Gun movie with Liam Neeson as his son, and I'm looking forward to that. Now we got the four scary movies, um, the, the spoofs of horror movies. I don't feel the need to pull those out. You know what they are. They're funny. Uh, Striking Distance was also filmed where I live. This is basically Die Hard with, you know, with Bruce Willis, but it's on the Allegheny River, and it's a lot of fun. It's kind of a mystery, like, who done it murder movie too so uh this is the green bay packers super bowl champions video i am a packers fan um what's funny is i live in pittsburgh and my parents you know growing up obviously want me to be a steelers fan i always liked the steelers but i never was like yeah that's my favorite team and it was the packers well then they meet in the super bowl man did I hear that from my mom? <laughs> um, Tower of Terror. This is the movie I was talking about earlier that I saw as a kid when I went down to Disney. And whenever I went back there two years ago by myself, I uh, went and got that little like figurine that I have up there of the tower itself. Vampire's Kiss. One of my favorite Nicolas Cage movies. Just hilarious. The Village. Um, I don't know why they don't have a 4K or Blu-ray of this. This movie would look fantastic in 4K. White Chicks. And then finally, White Noise. So that's my entire movie collection. It took almost an hour to do all this. I realized, you know, I talked most about the James Bond movie, so... Uh, as you can tell how much I talked about them and other movies like James Bond movies, how much I like them. So, but if you like this, let me know, tell me which movies of these you like, and thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys soon.